to the Novi Public Library Board of Trustees today. To start by calling, uh, asking uh, Secretary Kat Dooley to do roll call. Um, board or er, Trustee Member Melissa Augusta. Present. Trustee Member Dooley, that's me, I'm present. Um, <laughs> Trustee Bill Lawler is absent excused, and Trustee Craig Masternak is also absent excused. Trustee Tara Mishner. Present. Trustee Jeff Wood. Present. Trustee Tori Yu. Present. And student representatives, uh, Mahek Nasser. Present. And Tarun Tangar Tangarella. Present. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, if everyone could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you so much. So um, number five is our consent agenda. So if we can all look from pages five to 12 and just look at the um, minutes for the regular meeting. And then also um, the approval of claims and warrants, which is on page 13 through 15. I'm open up to any discussion or questions. And I just had, yes, please. Thank you so much. I just had one note, and that was um, it was mentioned a lot. A trustee, a, a trustee instead of the actual trustee's name. The examples on page nine, and I was just wondering if going forward, if we can go back to the typical uh, format of saying who said what. Just, I think it'd be good for record keeping. That's sure. All. Is that possible? Okay, perfect. Thank yep. you. Yep. Sometimes we have difficulty with um, the sound and picking up. So maybe what we can do is if you are mentioning something, if you mention your name, that might be helpful too, if you wouldn't mind addressing yourself. Okay? Great. And I'll try to remember to call your name if that's yeah, a possibility that would, that would too. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's smart. Thanks. Teamwork. Yes. <laughs> makes teamwork. And identifying ourselves. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Is there any other questions, comments? All right, do I have a motion to approve um, the consent agenda, agenda, which is the approval of regular minutes and the approval of claims and warrants? Motion I, to oh, approve. Hold Thank on one second. Oh, I think we missed four. The approval oh, of I'm so the sorry. agenda. Well, I'm just Only moving. because I have something, so no, I'm sorry. No, thank you. Okay, <laughs> back up the bus. All right, we're going to go to number four, the approval and overview of agenda, which is on pages one through four. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm, I'm I sorry, but so excited. I don't want to forget something tonight. Um, on page four, if we could add a D under uh, 15 matters for board action. I did not have um, a draft of the cafe lease when I created the packet over, over last week. Um, so this would be D, library ca cafe lease, first draft, attorney reviewed. You all have a hard copy of it. This won't be discussed tonight. It's for you to review. I will bring it back next month in order for discussion and hopefully approval if possible. Okay, so that is a D for 15 matters for board action. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any additional changes <laughs> or questions or anything for that? Thank you for that. All right, so do I have a uh, motion for approval and overview of agenda? A motion for approval and overview of agenda. Thank I'll you second. so much. Thank You're you welcome. so much. That would be Tara and Kat. Thank you. Okay, let's go to number five. Um, any discussions? Do I have a motion for um, A and B approval of regular meetings and approval of claims and warrants? Motion to approve. Thank you, Trustee You. Do I have a second? A second? second? <laughs> uh -oh. Thank you so much, uh, Tara <laughs> Mishner. <laughs> okay. Um, number five, correspond. Uh, what? We vote. Oh my goodness! I swear, it <laughs> seems like that's my first meeting. Yes, it's my first <laughs> meeting. Um, thank you for that. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Against. Thank you. <sighs> I need to take a deep <laughs> breath and kind of get myself grounded. Okay, number six, correspondence. So, yes, on page 16, 17, um, the library participates in next door. Um, we're able to add information to the neighborhoods that are around the library. And um, I wanted to just I, I put in there this evening, there was a comment about the library's uh, bioswales and how uh, one of the residents didn't realize that we had them. So this was a compliment to the library for having them. And then my response, thanking her and letting her know that we actually have three on the property. Um, 
they have been, as you know, over the years, sometimes difficult to maintain. Um, we have one that's working very well right now and a couple that still need attention and are, are being looked at, but they have brought butterflies, they have brought bees, and that's the purpose of them is to, to give that natural look and um, to bring um, other other welcomed critters <laughs> to the property. But just wanted to share with you that the comments that we received and how that was how that was responded to. Any questions, thoughts? I thought that was very nice that yep, you took the I time did. to even just acknowledge I that. I also appreciated um, Councilman uh, Much. He weighed in as well, and I know that's something that he is very interested in is the sustainable um, type of gardening and, and um, concepts that we've incorporated on, on the city's campus plus also in the community, and he also weighed in, so I appreciated that as well. Very nice. I have a quick question. Sure. Um, so for next door, do we promote anything on next door for our events? I, I haven't. Um, typically, I use it as alerts if the library's closed, okay. things like that. So I'll okay. use it in that nature. Okay. It is something we can look at. I just, I haven't had, you know, with the other things we're doing. Yes. If I could do it all at once, you know, in a hoot suite, that would yeah. be great, but it's right. not part of it. It has to be something else, but we right. can definitely look into it. Okay, great. Because yeah. I think um, City of Novi has a special account as an agency. They do. And I, I don't know what the qualifications are. I'll have to look. But it would I be can nice. The city's yeah, it yeah. would be nice if the library was considered an agency too, and then you wouldn't have to post under your name specifically. Okay. Yeah. Well, I do. I have it set up as the library as an account, so okay. it shows up as our logo. Okay. It's not yeah. me personally. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sounds but good. But I will ask the city for for their help in that. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, number seven. Is that right? I can move to number seven. I didn't forget anything. <laughs> Just check in. Um, presentation and special guests. So I am going to move to the podium. Uh, President Augusta, I hope you will join me. This is one of my favorite meetings. I think I say that a lot though. So I guess there's a lot of meetings that I find is my favorite. But um, actually this, this, this one is, is the end all be all for me for, for the year. One where we've finished out our year and tonight you know, we have goals that um, have been reported on and how we did for 1819. Um, but tonight is about recognizing some of our staff. And before I do that, I, I first wanna just kind of give a little analogy when I was thinking about you know, our staff in general and what we do at the library, we, we just continue to make wonderful strides as a public library. I think the projects, the services, um, the policies, uh, and the customer service that we provide, the projects, and, and even um, the new spaces that we've created this year have been wonderful, and I, I think we continue to do that, and, I, and that is what makes us excellent. Yeah. We are, and I, I love saying this, and I love repeating this, we are the only library right now in the state of Michigan that is excellent. And I don't think that comes, you know, um, just frivolously. I think there's a lot of hard work. I think there's a lot of dedication, and it comes from the, you know, almost 70 employees that we have at the library, along with the library board and, and your leadership and direction for us. So tonight is special because we're going to recognize, but I love music and I love going to concerts. Summer, summer for me is a fun time to let my hair down, if I could, if I could do that. Um, but I, you know, and I've, I've been going and listening to great music this summer and I think about a piano in the, in the keys and if you don't have all of those keys, you don't have a good sound. Our library has 70 keys, which are 70 employees that make beautiful music. Um, with our library and with all of you as helpers to create, you know, what we're doing in our community. I'm very proud of that and I'm very proud of the 70 people that I work with. I think it's just um, a wonderful sound that we continue to create. The friends also add to that as well and we just all seem to work well together. We seem to um, argue you know, and, and maybe have differences at times together, and yet no matter what, what comes out is, again, beautiful music. So I'm, I am very proud, and tonight we are gonna recognize a few people, but I think the whole staff should be told how wonderful they are. I think we have some fabulous people that have brought some ideas and, and leadership and creativity 
to our building that I don't think every library has. So I think we're fortunate. And I want to thank you, all of you as board members, but I, I just wanted to go on record of thanking the 70 people I work with. I love walking in the back door every day. I would rather walk in the back door because then I'm greeted right away with the people I work with and I say hi and then they see me running and, and leaving. And, but that's, it's, it's awesome to walk in every day and have a feeling that we are doing something wonderful for our Novi community. So it's, it is a blessing for me and I enjoy working with those 70 people. So thank you, Novi employees, for what you do and for having another great year. Um, 1819 was fantastic and if they look at, at the... Um, strategic goals and they look at that last document which is in the board packet and on the web website we did a lot this year i mean just a lot of good stuff for our community and i do think we continue to listen and i do think we continue to respond in a very positive way for what we're doing so with that said um we have 13 people tonight that we're going to recognize that have provided excellent customer service or have gone above and beyond in their work this year. And um, it's so awesome to, to mention all these names. I'm going to do that first. And then what I'm going to do is individually call up the individuals because I want you to hear what their colleagues said about them or their department heads because I think they need to hear it, not just read it. So we're recognizing our library stars for their enthusiasm, dedication, and hard work. 2018-19, Shannon O'Leary, Keith Perfect, Scott Rakestraw, Lisa Wrinkle, Mary Robinson. And for our Customer Service Award, we're recognizing Jean Aldrich, Emily Brush, Barbara Cook, Robin Dirks, Dominic Dute, Joe Plasky, Tia Marie Sanders, and David Silberman. 13 people tonight, and I think that's, that's, a, that's a lot. That's a nice number of staff. Um, and one of the largest groups that's been recognized over the last couple years. So at this time, I want to um, invite up Joe. Come on up here, Joe. And I, I'm going to do the customer service award first. So this is the library, their, their library colleagues. You know, those employees that they work with, people are nominating these individuals. And the customer service award recognizes a staff person that has provided the most consistent and most positive customer service to our NPL patrons or staff over the past year in 1819. The person always greets patrons and staff with a smile. The person goes above and beyond to assist a patron or fellow MPL employee. And the person is calm in chaotic situations, which sometimes is hard. So um, you never know what you, what you can be faced with sometimes. So Joe Plasky, he is our facilities assistant, one. And this is what someone had to say about Joe. Joe is always greeting people when they come into the library with a warm, welcoming smile. On top of that, he is extremely helpful to not only the people renting the meeting rooms and other library patrons, but also to internal staff, always asking how, are, how we are and if we need anything. He goes above and beyond in his job to make sure everyone is doing well and is happy. Joe, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> David Silberman. They, some of them have to go back to work, unfortunately. <laughs> and, and some of them could not be here tonight just because it's summer and schedules and vacations and yeah. stuff, just so you're aware. So David... He is our electronic services librarian. Uh, this is what our staff person had to say. David represents great service to not only external, but internal customers. Mm -hmm. He is sought after by patrons and well appreciated by staff. He steps up to assist and teach his fellow staff. I am confident when David is at the desk that everything will be handled in a professional manner. This is also evident as he walks through the building. He assists even when he is not on desk. He greets patrons and stops to talk with those he knows and even those who, and even those who just need some help. He's also really good at puns and jokes, and he, keeps us, he does keep us smiling. Congratulations, David. <laughs> Dominic Dute is, yep, there he is. Come on, Dominic. Come on down. Dominic Dude is our technology assistant, 
and this is what was said about Dominic. Dominic consistently receives comment cards from patrons who are extremely appreciative of his knowledge and patience. They use words like fantastic, friendly, professional, and so on to describe Dominic. Definitely a job well done. And I do see a lot of these comments that come through about Dominic, and I'm very appreciative of his work. And he does a lot of one-on-one -on -one work with our patrons. So, you know, you have to be a patient person and calm, and that's definitely one of your many great characteristics. So, thank you. <laughs> Next is Barbara Cook. And as you know, Barbara is our bookkeeper and also the keeper of our minutes here at our library board meetings. Barbara gives the utmost in customer service. Patrons are always welcomed with a warm, genuine greeting and with a smile when they meet Barbara. Barbara goes out of her way to give our guests what they ask for in the way of meeting rooms, thinking ahead of what they may require based on their type of event. She, was all, she is always thinking of others, and their feelings, and she always has a positive word to say about everyone. Her financial skills are such a value to the library, and I would definitely say yes to that. I, I, an asset to our office, at the, uh, for sure. Her knowledge of all the library's financial accounts is amazing for the, for the short time she's been with us. We are so very lucky to have Barbara on our team. Congratulations, Dr. Yeah. Jean Aldrich is not with us tonight. I would like to read um, what a coworker said about Jean. She's one of our support services clerks. Jean is almost never without a smile on her face. Each and every day, it is apparent that Jean loves to come to work and be amongst her coworkers. That positive attitude is often shared with both the patrons Jane assists here at the library and those she takes care of as part of the outreach team. Whether she is out dropping off outreach express deliveries, filling read boxes, or helping her regular patrons, some of, who, some of whom even have nicknames for her, Jane, Jean is always upbeat, patient, attentive, and hardworking. She makes every patron feel like they receive special treatment from her, no matter if they are her first or last patron of the day. So thank you, Jean. Emily Brush. Emily, come on down. You're the next contestant. Uh, no. <laughs> Emily is our librarian and our, for early literacy, our early literacy specialist. And this is what uh, a staff person said about Emily. Emily has a lot on her plate and constantly goes above and beyond for the family she serves through preschool visits, story times, and the 1,000 books before kindergarten. She is constantly meeting needs that she sees for those families, including story time backpacks and the special needs collection. Obviously, with all those new materials and collections, there are constant questions and concerns from parents and families. And Emily is always patient, kind, and goes above and beyond to help them. In the midst of all, she works the reference desk with a smile and a can-do attitude. She is an inspiration. Thank you, Emily. <laughs> Tia Marie Sanders. <laughs> money, money, right? No. <laughs> Tia Marie is our building monitor. Uh, Tia has taken the task of speaking to patrons and turned it into an art form. Even if we have done three the library is closing announcements, she never loses her cool and consistently is able to gently put to gently but firmly inform the, head, the headphone wearing guest of the situation <laughs> in a kind but assertive manner that gets the point across. Her way with teens is also amazing. When I have been absent, she has stepped in to help out with things and she's always willing to help if she can if I have a tight time window between setups. Thank you, Tia Marie. Robin Dirks isn't here with us this evening. Um, Robin is a support services shelter, and this is what a staff person said about Robin. I've had the opportunity to work with Robin for the past four or five years, and she most definitely meets all the criteria of this award. She always has a positive attitude, whether she is working around crowds of storytime toddlers or getting stopped for help during the course of her daily work. 
She is always helpful and polite when interacting with patrons and will always go the extra mile to make sure they get the help they need. If she is not able to answer a question, she will walk the patron up to the reference desk to connect them to the right person. She is great to work with and an asset to the library. So thank you, Robin. <laughs> now our next set of awards are, is, it's called the Above and Beyond Award. And this award recognizes staff by their department heads who are seen going above and beyond in their attempts to reach their annual goals or have made a significant impact on a library service, collection, or program for NPL in this year, 2018-19, that truly meets our motto of inform, inspire, include. And our first winner, and she is not here this evening, but it is Shannon O'Leary, and she is our International Languages Librarian. Um, Shannon started the new International Librarian position last August, and she hasn't stopped. She has continually thought of new ideas, jumped in, and pursued them. She has made the programming and collections a cohesive, well-functioning unit. Each reflects and markets each other. She has created wonderful marketing displays for her collections and her programs, created marketing tools in multiple languages by reaching out to her conversation groups. This was a wonderful project for them to work on together, and she has developed new programs for our ESL community and now is working on promoting citizenship resources. She also already partnered with multiple places in the community to get the word out about her collections and resources. If she attended a couple of Japanese events that happened this year um, and is really putting herself out there and making a name for herself with, with Novi Library, and we are so appreciative of her. So thank you so much, <laughs> Shannon O'Leary. And the next one is Mary Robinson. I do know that Mary is on vacation. Um, she is one of our librarians. Um, Mary started with a small suggestion of changing the computer lab into a library makerspace. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought that on June 22nd, that space would have launched and it has been quite an exciting um, thing to see happening in our building. From the moment the project started, she has had a clear vision for this room and what it would mean to library patrons. She has included the technology and, of course, the artistic aspects to fulfill all needs in our community. She has gone above and beyond to see this project through to its launch and has many more plans for its future. And if you haven't been in lately, there's, there's more things that are coming in the next couple months. And she just always comes in with creativity and enthusiasm. I and mean, this has been a wonderful fit for her. And I thank Mary so much. <laughs> next one is Scott Rakestraw. And I don't think Scott's not here either. He is our IT systems administrator. Scott was nominated for, the, for his work with, it, with the IS staff, the Information Services staff, and the Novi Historical Commission volunteers to produce a website with a searchable index of their extensive document and photo archive. Procedures were also put in place for tagging titles or captions, which allowed the staff at the city's city clerk's office to access and search their archive for photos to use in their 50 years of excellence celebration. He also provided training to IS staff and the Novi Historical Volunteers on item tagging and publishing tools. All were more than pleased with the finished result. This project could have easily ended in failure since it was very time consuming due to the volume of photos and documents to be organized and tagged. But Scott kept the project moving and kept participants from becoming overwhelmed. Thank you, Scott. Lisa Wrinkle, and I know she's not here either tonight. She's one of our support services shelvers. Um, Lisa always goes above and beyond in her daily tasks to ensure the department is in the best condition for our patrons. She has a great eye for catching mislabeled materials and bringing it to tech services attention or noticing where a collection could use some shifting or even looking for ways to improve our procedures for efficiency and ease. She is an extremely hard worker tremendously dedicated and very skilled at her job responsibilities, often helping to mentor new shelvers as they come aboard too. Her upbeat personality and take charge attitude make her a great asset to have in our shelving, on our shelving staff and her friendly and outgoing demeanor is a wonderful part of our support services team. So we thank Lisa for that. <laughs> and finally, Keith Perfect. Keith is on our facilities team. He's a facilities assist assistant too. Keith has been invaluable 
to the timely opening of the iCube Makerspace. He has been a pleasure to work with. He does quality work with attention to details. He always comes through with requests and has been very helpful with the many and varied elements in putting together the Makerspace, from assembling the cabinet tree, building a, works, a worktop surface for the Dremel tool, and setting up the Muse laser engraver. Laser calibration would have been extremely intimidating without Keith's help. Keith is a great resource and has great ideas for ensuring things run efficiently. For example, there is a small piece that is extremely important for, you, for using the Muse laser engraver. He's figured out a way to make sure the piece will never be lost despite the, the fact that several people will be using the machine at different times. In addition to that, you all know that Keith, Keith was the lead with me on the project for the LED this year. I'm happy to tell you that we finished out the last part of the light bulb switch outs and also there was a huge cost savings over this year, and I do believe it was because of this project staying on time and on target and for us to benefit from it. So Keith, congratulations and thank you. So we have, uh, our plaque always goes in our staff lounge because that's where a lot of our, our staff, you know, come together, have lunch and enjoy time together. But also all of these employees will be going to a dinner in August um, Trustee Augusta will join me. We will take them to dinner and let them enjoy the evening. And I just want to thank the library friends because they help us support that in order to do that for the staff. So I thank you for that. They're very supportive of the staff and, and what we do. And I just want to thank all of you as board trustees again for seeing the opportunity to provide these types of awards to our staff and thanking you for your support. Thank you. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, that was fun. Yes. That was really neat. Thank you for making that all happen, too, Julie. It's my pleasure. Absolutely. All right. Number eight. Nope. No, number seven. Seven B. B. Seven B. The student representatives' <laughs> annual presentation. The platform is yours. Woohoo! This is my first meeting. <laughs> You're doing I think they might have it for you right on the desktop. Yep, right, there right. you go. Good. Good. Go ahead. Okay. Present. Oh, you go to slideshow. Push F5. F5. Okay, there we go. Yay. All right. Teamwork. <laughs> So this is our 2018-2019 end of the year presentation um, by myself and Turin Tangirella. Um, and also with the help of our um, information services librarian, uh, Ms. Goshag, and of course, Ms. Farkas. Thank you. The summer 2018 programs included the Henna Tattoo Workshop, which took place on, on July 11th. 
Attendees got to create their own henna tattoos with artists Angel Shaw and Mahendi Styling while learning about this traditional art form. The attendance was 22. It also included the Phoenix Free Running Academy, which took place on, on July 25th. At attendees learned aspects of movement, specializing in parkour and free running. The purpose of this program was to teach par participants parkour in a fun and safe manner. The attendance was 32. All right, so for additional summer 2018 programs, uh, we had the Drum Unity Rhythmic Music Program took place on August 22nd. Attendees joined instructor Lori Fithian for an energetic and rhythmic hands-on program where participants were able to create music using various instruments. The attendance was 70. The end of summer teen after hours party took place on August 24th. Attendees celebrated the end of summer reading program with an after hours party of food, activities, and fun. And the attendance was 50. The fall 2018 and the winter 2019 programs included the SAT and ACT, or both, program, which took place on September 25th. Attendees listened to the Princeton Review as they covered truths, misconceptions, and comparisons of the test, and did a few sample problems. The attendance was 80. The Howl Nature Center cre Creatures of the Night program took place on October 9th. Attendees got to meet nocturnal birds and mammals from the Howl Nature Center. The attendance was 50. The STEM Gingerbread Engineering Challenge pro program took place on December 18th. Attendees got to make and decorate their own gingerbread house. The program was divided into two program. The program was divided into two programs for different age groups. The attendance for ages four to eight was 77, and the um, attendance for ages eight and nine plus uh, was 66. For spring 2019 programs, the Battle of the Books program took place on March 16th. Students read from a list of six books and then participated in a contest where each team answered questions about those books. Prizes were awarded to the first, second, and third place teams. There were also prizes for best team name and best costume, uh, most creative, most like their team name, and best homemade. The attendance was 300 plus. The five strategies to lower your cost of college program took place on April 16th. During this program, Mike Bank, Director of College Planning for Equivest Financial Advisors, presented a workshop that was designed to answer parents' biggest questions about college planning. The attendance was 25. The summer 2019 programs included a University of Stories summer reading kickoff party, which took place on June 9th. Attendees got to sign up for the summer reading program. There was also a petting farm, pony and horse rides, face painting, games, DJ flip from airtime, and freeze pops. The attendance was 709. The tie-dye party took place on June 25th. Attendees brought their own t-shirts and used tie-dye to create colorful designs. The attendance for that was 30. For our program summary, so we noticed that the programs with the highest teen attendance were the programs that help teens with college readiness, such as the SAT and ACT practice tests. We would like to continue implementing more programs like these in the future. Um, the tab meetings and the tween book club programs have had consistent attendance and will be continuing in the future. The Teen Advisory Board, or TAB, update. The TAB meetings have taken place each month from September to May. It's concurrent to the, with the school year. The 2019-2020 TAB officers were elected at the May meeting. Two of our goals from last year was to increase members and have more outreach opportunities. Throughout this year, we focused on having active members and making plans to get more involved in the outreach in the community next year. With the help of a teen volunteer and TAB member, TAB worked together on a community service project called Crayon Initiative. A donation bin was placed in the library's lobby, lobby where, we, where used and new crayons were collected. TAB sorted the crayons by color and, that, and were sent to the company who melts them into new crayons, which are then donated to children in local hospitals. So our 2019-2020 TAP goals, uh, to participate in at least one outreach opportunity within the community, be involved in at least one community service project, get TAB member feedback through surveys and group discussions, to increase TAB, active TAB members, and to promote TAB through more social media and investigate working with Nova High School to, to promote TAB in the Cat's Eye News, which is broadcasted every day during the school year. And 
believe that's it. Thank you. Thanks, oh, nice Carol. Thank you so much. I love the numbers of attendance. It was incredible. Yeah. Incredible. 709? 700, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, everything, just beautiful attendance. So, and I love your goals. I'm hoping that you'll include the, um, the new iCube, too, mm -hmm. in, your, in some of your goals for next year. Of course, yeah. Awesome. Any other comments or feedback? I just wanted to ask, what was your favorite thing about serving this year? One thing. I have to say the tab meetings, to be honest. Because um, it's a place to go to after school, and you can just socialize with friends while doing like community work for the library. It was, it was fun. I liked it. Nice. Yeah, I would also say the tab meetings and meeting new people, and also just to know that like the students' voices and our thoughts are appreciated. That was really nice. They're very appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you so much. Tori? Oh, yeah. Uh, um, actually, so about five years ago, I was a teen rep, and then in, in our program attendance was not as high as it was now, so I'm glad the increase, and then also just the outside-the-box program ideas mm -hmm. that are not necessarily like library surrounded, but, but like even the book clubs, because our book clubs back when I was a teen rep was like two or three, and just having that consistent high numbers, I think that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, 7C, Sue Johnson, our friend's president. We have a presentation and an annual update. If I can get this working. <laughs> okay. Oh, it might have been turned off. Yeah. It went to sleep. Did you turn it off or sleep? Sleep. sleep. Oh. Is there a wake button? <laughs> <laughs> Usually you just press power. I think you just smack it on the whole time. I think you just yeah. press power. Try power. There he is. Here comes Frank. <laughs> One moment. Frank to the rescue. Da da da. Okay. Is it fine? Yeah. It might have gone. Don't worry, I know. You know what? Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's not you. It's just there we go. <laughs> okay. There we go. There we Yay. go. Yay. Thank you. Thank Good you. Good all that fun. Behind the scenes. Save us All right. I'm happy to be here and happy to be invited to present the Friends um, Year in Review. We, too, have had a great year. Um, for the first time in about four years, our income exceeded our expense by $4,000. Wow. So here's just a brief wrap up. Our contributions to the library are in two categories, annual contributions and the wish list. The initial commitment last year was 15-3 for annual contributions, and that's pretty steady. Uh, 2500 for uh, summer reading, 2500 for community reads, raising a reader was 3000 and music programs. Um, both the Listen at the Library and the, if you've had the opportunity to do the patio, music on the patio series, uh, that was about 4900 So those are kind of the high um, priced items in annual contributions. The wish list was initially 10 4 and got amended to 15,000 through the course of the year. Um, the benches, the one by the stairs and the new one under the sign in the entryway, uh, were purchased by the friends with the money made from book for the evening. Uh, that was 3,600. The iCube maker, maker space we had originally um, agreed to maybe a couple thousand. Yeah. I've forgotten. But it, 2800 mm -hmm. But we ended up not using some of the other money, so we rolled that into the iCube space. And then Mary gave us the demo, and the whole entire <laughs> board was so impressed that we um, agreed to give, her, give another $1,000 wow. so Mary could do. Uh, I think it allowed you to, to us. We totally funded the new um, uh, 3D, printer. 3D printer. You did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was nice. Um, the special needs workstation was budgeted for 34. I think they planned on two. We only ended up doing one. So the 1555 is going to be a carryover to next year. And we've all, we've spread that among about three different items. Um, summer reading was a little over budget, so we put some more in that. Um, and I've, a couple of the other. The early literacy area. Yes. Uh, yep. The, um. Mm -hmm. The race car, getting rid of the race car. <laughs> <laughs> That's a 
Same quote. No, I didn't mean it exactly that way. I didn't take it that way. <laughs> so the total contribution from the Friends last year in direct library programs was 29,141. The book nooks supplied 28,000 of that. We had a stupendous year in the book nook. Uh, we're not sure why and we're not asking, we're not talking about it a lot, <laughs> we're just kind of, however it's continuing. Yep. We had uh, $700 the first uh, week in July, $800 the second week in July, another 700 It's, as I say, we really shouldn't talk about it. <laughs> uh, however, Thank we you. did have 14 weeks over $600, and, that, and that's oppo as opposed to four the prior year. Wow. It seems to be, we're, we have sales throughout the year, so right now, um, back to school, we're having a children's book sale. And at the beginning of those, we have a lot of interest, we have a lot of teachers who come and, and look for books for, the, for their school rooms. Um, so we get a good um, up in, in sales for the week or two, the first week of sales. Um, so that's our sales strategy. It's working thanks to Carol Hoffman, who's our book nook manager, also the vice president. Um, she and her crew are just fantastic. We have about 47 volunteers that keep the book nook going. Membership, we have 239 memberships. That's about 350 people. 45 new memberships last year, 26 of those coming uh, from our event booked for the evening. So that was, that was very nice. We brought in $6,478 in membership money, so that's where we get the extra that we can provide to the library as well. Um, we struggle with getting in younger people. Uh, we struggle with getting them on the board. It's just everybody has so much to do, and there's so many places to volunteer. We did appreciate um, being part of the volunteer fair that the library had. That was a great event. Um, we got uh, several new people who are working in the book nook, and that's kind of the base level. You start in the book nook, and if there seemed to be somebody who's really interested in the group as a whole, then after working with them for a few months, we'll invite them to a meeting and see if they're interested in joining our board. So um, that's, that's what the volunteering helps us. We also um, uh, had a volunteer event for our book, I'm back on book nook again, book nook workers <laughs> um, in April, which I think is volunteer appreciation week. Mm -hmm. um, we had everybody come in, we had a, a brunch before hours and they could choose a book and we put a book plate in it acknowledging their volunteers. And I think everybody, of all the things that have been done to to recognize volunteers, I think everybody felt that that was a very nice thing to do. So we have the first six months have been a little bit slow. We've got a couple of things going. We're not going to do book for the evening this year, so um, that may be one issue. Um, the other thing is you've got the tax changes, so uh, contributions aren't uh, you know done the same. However, if you're retired, you can write checks directly out of your 401k, and those are tax deductible and still. So here's the way our summary is. Individual is a $10, family 15, contributing 30, sustaining 50. So here are the number of members we have in each category and the, the new members. So we did get four new benefactor members this year, and that was due to booked. We had some very generous people who came in and, and uh, attended book for the evening and gave us a very generous donation. Uh, and so to talk about book just a minute, um, prior to 2017, we were having appreciation events, and they were costing us around $2,500. And we thought, as a membership appreciation event, that's a little pricey because if you make 5000 in membership and you spend half of it on a party, it's probably there are better things we could do with that money. And I think even our members um, would agree that there were better things. So it was between going to, you know, lemonade and cookies and the music event in the afternoon 
or um, making it a fundraiser. So we began the course to make it a fundraiser. Uh, we had an individual join us with a lot of experience in uh, volunteer work with the Y, and she got uh, the restaurants to come and donate all the food. Uh, she also got us some donations for silent auction items. So the first year that we did that, we made $3,000 which isn't a lot in fundraising terms. I mean, she was used to ten, twenty-five thousand dollars So um, the, in 2018, we did the same. And last year in May, we got together and said, well, we've got to go the next step and start charging for the event. Mm -hmm. It's a nice event, uh, a lot to do. It's two hours packed full. Um, so we're really, we're going to charge. And we decided on a nominal amount of $10 per person. We got a, a lot of kickback. Um, for years and years, people were used to a free event, and we had a lot of negative feedback. So we decided to not have booked for the evening in 2019, go for 2020. 2020 is our big year. It's the 60th anniversary of the Friends starting the library, and it is the 10th anniversary in the new library. So we have lots to celebrate. We figured we could focus on that. We'd give time, people time to adjust to charging, and uh, we will do a big event. We have, we're going to do some things differently. It's a lot of work to get 13 restaurants to bring food in, so mm -hmm. we're looking to focus on just one uh, for the main, the main food, and then we can work on getting sponsors. And I think uh, it should be pretty easy. The library has such a tremendous reputation that getting sponsors for our 60th mm -hmm year and our 10th year in the library should be pretty easy. So looking forward, at our annual meeting, we presented a check for 29700 to the library. Uh, that is split as 158 for annual contributions and a wish list of 15455 uh, renovation in the youth area, which is what they're going to do to the area after they remove the race car. Uh, 3,500. We're putting in 2,000 to the iCube space, um, and already um, some of our our um, board members are looking at uh, work that they can do to bring um, to bring either. I think uh, Carol's looking at a uh, packet that you can can make. She's our card maker, so there's a lot of talent on our friends team. So we'd like to tap into their talents. So yeah, we've, we've shared our, our need and want of them working with us in that capacity. One idea we had for we were going to do some sort of a membership drive in October. Since we're not having our booked event, we've got to replace that with something. And we were thinking of even having something like um, a members only night in the iCube, um, come in and I went in and, and copied pictures. I had a couple, a group of pictures that I wanted to get copied and I wanted to do it fast and easy. Put it in the machine, <laughs> <laughs> copied it onto my floppy drive and I was good to go. Um, other things, uh, the after hours locker renovation, they're gonna do some work to the front um, entryway and get rid of some of the lockers and put a bench in there so people can sit. The bench that we did put in with the booked money is used almost constantly, so that's great. Staff logo wear, $2,500. We haven't done that in maybe two, three years. We like to honor the staff because they help us too. Everybody here tonight um, has done something to help the friends, and, and uh, that's very much appreciated. Thank you for... Oh, thank you. Thank for um, inviting me to speak. Any questions? Do you want to do the check? Do you want to do the Sure, we can okay. do the check. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I like this meeting too. <laughs> you always are part of this meeting, so yeah. it's nice because you can yeah, see what the staff does. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
the energy and the excitement and the dedication from all the board members was just absolutely incredible. I mean, the love that they have for the library and what they do truly is just spectacular. So thank you for inviting me to that. And thank you again for, for the all, all your love and support and financial yes. support. Too. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Anytime anybody wants to come and join one of our meetings, you all, I know everybody has so many meetings. <laughs> Thank you so much. Before you go, I wanted to make a quick comment. Um, I was so excited to see the revenue jump in the book nook. And honestly, I think part of that's attributed, you're the only bookstore that we have in Novi. Yes. <laughs> it's point. true. No, it's true. It's you're true. Right. And people are clamoring for a place to buy literature mm -hmm. or a place to seek out a way to get books. And you know, some people don't have room to have a huge library in their house. They come here, obviously. but the fact that people are able to donate and repurpose um, and find like a new home for these well-loved books or gently loved books yes. is really important. So I think that you know everything that you guys do is amazing and we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so we'll go on to number eight, public comment. In order to hear all citizen comments at a reasonable hour, the library board requests that speakers respect the three minute time limit. This is not a question and answer session, therefore library board members will not respond to questions. It is an opportunity to voice your thoughts with the Novi Public Library Board of Trustees. We do not have anybody today. So number nine is the student representative's report for June of 2019. Um, the programs. A universal, a universal Stories summer reading kickoff program took place on June 9th. Attendees got to sign up for the summer reading program. There was also a petting farm, pony and horse rides, uh, face painting, games, DJ flip for mirror time, and freeze pop. The attendance was 709. The Tween Pizza and Pages book club took place on June 26th. Attendees read the book Astro Twins, Project Blast Off by Mark Kelly. The purpose of this book club is to encourage tweens to read and also allow tweens to practice for the Battle of the Books program that the library holds annually. The attendance was 21. The tie-dye party took place on June 25th. Attendees brought their own t-shirts and tie-dye to create and used tie-dye tie to create colorful designs. Attendance was 30. Um, and below is our total breakdown of Teen Space members from the 2018-2019 school year, and our total for the school year was 4,854. There is no tab meeting on the, uh, in the month of June. Tab meetings will resume again in September 2019, when the 2019-2020 school year begins. The, the next tab meeting will be on September 20th. For our upcoming programs, the STEM Build Your Own R2K Rocket will be on August 7th, and the summer reading finale at Paradise Park for grades 7 through 12 will be on August 22nd. And then on the next page, we have pictures from the Between the Pages Tween Book Club on August 28th and attendees at the tie-dye party. And then we have the attendees at the Universe of uh, Story Summer Reading Kickoff Program. And we can see like the ponies and the horses and the petting farm. And that was a really cool event, really fun. If I can just take a minute, I want to thank um, both Mahak and Tarun for, uh, this is their summer vacation, and yet they stay dedicated to us through the summer, so I thank you so much for that, because some of the boards that we have don't have the opportunity for the students to stay engaged through the summer, and you do, and I also know that you've been helping at the library and have been um, involved as well, so I want to thank you for that because I know this is a time for you to relax and enjoy, and yet you still stay dedicated to us. So thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you both. It was a great report. It. Thank you for your time. Thank you. See you in the end of August. So enjoy until then. Okay. Okay. I have a question. I have a question. Oh, sure. In terms of the teen space count, is this consistent with the, the four thousand eight fifty four with usual with usual numbers? So we took a dip this year. Actually, um, we had higher numbers last year. We had close to 6,000 actually, just over 6,000 last year. So I'm, I'm not sure what to attribute it to. Um, the same type of marketing, same type of information was used. Okay. Um, we already are gearing up for Engage, which is uh, September, October, mm -hmm. and we have 
created a blurb and we put a photo in mm -hmm. of Miss um, Hackaday Dennis, who you know is our our right. um, room monitor for the for the space. Oops, sorry. Ooh. And um, we hope then to drum up and let people know, you know, that it'll be back and um, you know programming. I think there's always ways to look at to right. see if there's programming we can engage them with. Maybe even the opportunity with the cafe changing. Mm -hmm. Is there an opportunity for that to grow more depending on what they offer? So this will be a year for us to see with some changes with that. Um, the iCube can also be bringing in kids in a different capacity and, mm -hmm. and we'll look to do engage them as well. Um, but it did take a dip from okay. last year. All mm -hmm. right. All right. And then Teen Space turnout, uh, is it mostly the younger end or is it more upper it classmen no, or the it, mix? It is primarily our ninth and 10th graders for the okay. most part. Um, juniors and seniors tend to have um, transportation. Right. They don't necessarily need to be hanging out as much. And, mm -hmm. and I do think we serve as a purpose to that for being a an area or location for our teens to hang out if they don't have the ride okay. or if they're waiting in between between sports or activities that don't start until maybe four or five o'clock. Okay. So, um, but yeah, it is typically our ninth and 10th graders for the most part. Okay. Once in a great while we'll see a middle schooler, but because of the location of the middle school, right. we don't tend to see as many, although they are invited. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And then, and then I know the freshmen have orientation. I wonder that's a good place to market the teen right. space program. Great. I will be happy. That's a good to do idea. That. Yeah. I think part of the uh, dip, I think we talked about it earlier, was the weather. We did have yeah. a few times yeah. when we closed, and we also moved a couple times mm -hmm. Team Space as well from its current location to a smaller space just because of some rentals that were bigger with us hosting maybe like Michigan Library Association right. or something. Right, for sure. And that played into it because that has a room capacity that is smaller than what we typically have. For you sure. are correct. Yeah. Yep. But I definitely think food will be a big draw. Always a draw. Yes. I do too. And the IQ. And hopefully so better food. Think, so yeah. Better yes. food. Mm -hmm. We're excited. Yeah. So I think, yes. it'll, I think it'll go up next year. I do year. too. I think it will. Yes. Yeah. But I thank you, yeah. um, Trustee Yu. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Any more? Great. Please go and enjoy your summer. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. Thank you so much. Great thank you. work. All right, number 10, the President's Report. Um, it's on page 21. These are our strategic um, objectives. And Julie, do you want to talk about that? Because you gave a... Actually, I'll, Kat? Let, I'll let Trustee um, okay. Julie, because she's on, the, on that committee. Okay. okay. Um, so Julie put together this amazing um, example of some of the actual actionable items that she wants to do with our strategic objectives. And just to reiterate what the objectives are, um, for the public. Um, going forward for the next three years, what we want is to, number one, empower universal literacy. And that's just not literacy by reading. That's also technological literacy and cultural literacy. Universal literacy would want to encompass everything. Uh, number two, escalate an innovative and inclusive culture. Uh, because Novi is an incredibly diverse, wonderful community, and our library wants to be the conduit to escalate that. And uh, three is enhance core interactions within our diverse community. So um, anything that provides barrier-free access is definitely the direction that we all wanted to go from all the public feedback. Um, so what we're hoping is, we hope that you had a chance to review a lot of these actionable items. And if there's anything that you'd like to add, um, Julie would love your feedback tonight. Mm -hmm. Or we could accumulate it we and could. talk about it at the next meeting. Um, but really, you know, this is just the tip of the iceberg. I already told Julie some of my feedback, which I'm so excited about the idea of um, multimedia billboards and things like that um, within the library. I was super excited about that. Um, the touch screen interaction in the building for programming events and services, that was, that was pretty exciting to see. So, you know, if you have any feedback now, that, that would be great um, to entertain. So I you. hope that what I did was give you a, a good summary, mm -hmm. you know, based on the categories that we used when we talked with the community and had all of our focus and feedback sessions. Um, what I was looking for is we'd like to use this in some capacity because I think people need to know the direction we're going in and, and this be that one page piece somehow yes. created. Um, but all the data you received, which went with this, that I sent out, um, if there was something that you saw in there that was missing that should be called out better, you know, please let me know. I hope it's, it's summarized well, but I am open to you know, any other thoughts you might have. And then I included at the bottom, um, and it's, 
it's not that it's a smaller section. It's just that I, I in columns, it, yeah. you know, it, you're looking at six. So seven got added. That doesn't mean that staff development doesn't weigh in any differently from the other six that are at right. the top. I want to make sure that that's understood. It's not an afterthought, that staff development. It's just the way I did the box. Right. There's lots of bullet points there that actually would probably equal out to it had it been designed, you know, when you're looking at it. But literally, this is a rough draft. I just wanted to get this info on a page so that I can have our new communications person start working on mm -hmm. what that creative piece will look like so that right. we can present something to the community. I'm ready right. for that for that piece. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have a quick question. Sure. Are you thinking of it being like maybe like a postcard type thing or like a one sheet? Or I one think card? it I think for it you know what? I don't want to answer that because I want to give Dana, our new communications person, the opportunity to create something. So I don't want to pigeonhole what that is yet. I have a vision, but I want to give her the opportunity to, to take a, a stab at it if that if that helps. Mm -hmm. um, but I I do want to make sure this information is well communicated. So I don't want to take away from this, but we'll have to figure out. I don't, I don't know what that piece looks like yet. Just concise is what you're thinking. Yes. Kind of like yes. a, something that people can grab easily. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. Okay. Right. So with the, with the size of it and the amount of information, even though I'll, I'll go back to one of our former trustees, um, Trustee Poupard, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, writing tight and making sure that we're giving just good, concise info. Mm -hmm. This to me is as concise as I think we're going to get because there's a lot yeah. to what we saw. And if there's a way to maybe have an eight and a half by 17 folded and it have that look of someone grabbing it quickly, but it, it being available, or maybe it's broken down into certain areas and shared that way. Um, I, but I want Dana to, to weigh in. Sure. I just I, wanted to I get don't it. want a director. I want her to bring yeah. that creativity from one of the first pieces she might be doing. I just wanted to get an idea of yeah. what you were thinking. So you're thinking all these points are going to be part of this? I was hoping because I like people to, to see where we're going, but I, you know, until she starts putting something out, I know it's wordy. But <laughs> yeah. I, right. I'm going yeah. to say this because I mean, we put a lot of time into making sure the strategic objectives were concise and right. high level. Maybe but what we could do is... Be, maybe it's, I, Those yeah, are almost ahead. lost in this document. Got here. it. Okay. So um, I have no problem with it being super broad and, and then me going from a different direction. Yeah, I, some of these are really specific, mm -hmm. I would say, the yeah. point. Yes, right. And that's why I asked the question. No, I was great question. if it could be like a quick. So thing. maybe, okay, I'll start broad is what I'll do. I'll start broad with it because no matter what, you're going to see that same kind of documentation quarterly of how we're doing with things. Yeah. Right. I think right. it's important for that to be reported back to you to see where are we, you know, yeah. with, with this three-year scope. Yeah, if yeah. that helps. And there could be a way to disseminate the information public facing, but then also, you know, we can elaborate during our meetings yeah. for the rest of the actionable items that you okay. have here. Because the public doesn't necessarily have to see all the bullet points, although you guys really should because it's awesome. But, like, <laughs> you know, but I understand when it comes to like marketing that to the public, we really just want to go out of the gate with our three mm -hmm. strategic objectives up front great um, and then we could maybe pick our top three in each box yeah. if you want to put it in the marketing piece I don't know yeah but I, I will start broad yeah that helps start me. Broad. that's what I was looking for I was looking for yeah. a little bit of direction and, and a blessing tonight just so yeah. that you see what we're working with it's definitely smaller and more concise than the big right. packet of details sure. right. yeah. um, but I don't want to lose it either. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm conscious of not losing, you know, right. some of those thoughts and having Absolutely. it go away. But I'm, I'm happy to start broad with that. Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Um, are the, the new uh, magazine issue, is, is that September, October, you said? It is. Could that be something where it's more concise? Because I know Engage is moving to the more article type instead mm -hmm. of just listing programs. It could. And we it, could highlight some things as it as it comes out. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Great idea. Yeah. And it takes, like, the issues are coming out more, so yeah. maybe each issue highlight a specific strategic ob objective. objective. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. what mm -hmm. that is. Yeah. Potentially. Or great. Mm -hmm. Love it. Okay. And we could also be highlighting in the e-newsletter. Yes. That goes out monthly. Yeah. yeah. So a little corner or something, just, hey, here's how we're doing. Yeah, okay. definitely. Great. Yeah. I like how you gave us you the copy of everything. Yes. <laughs> I wanted you to see what this all is like that data was. <laughs> all the feedback and where you, yeah, and how many people. And then you took it to this where it's... Isn't it great? Yeah. And then awesome. I think coming up with... You know your objectives with little summaries and 
Yeah, I think, well, wasn't it when we voted on it, you had a description about each of mm -hmm. the objectives, like a yes. general summary. We did have that. Which I thought was beautiful. Mm -hmm. It really explained your premise and your basic, you know, your overall idea of it. So I loved the verbiage okay. from that. Yeah. So if I could just have one plug, and that's for April Stevenson. I would yes. not have been able to get to yeah. this document that you saw tonight right. without all of her data collection yes. and keeping track of everything Thank for you, months April. and months and months. So yeah. April has really been the backbone of, of this in order to keep us all on track and to keep things recorded in, in the proper she way. She even phoned in when she was on vacation she during did. one of our yes. meetings. <laughs> it was amazing. Yes, she did. So thank you to April as well. Um, I think another technique that could help um, get the communication out to the public with all of these items is to do video. Yep. And I think like putting that on social, so you don't necessarily have to put it in writing, but to give public updates on it through video, um, because a lot of people, you know, you can do so much more and especially Julie like you are so articulate and energetic if you don't want it to be you that's okay too but I think that that would be great to do right. on social I'm getting used to Facebook live and trying to do more. <laughs> <laughs> I thought beyond books was good you know you get to yes. sit you're a little more comfortable when you're on when you're live and on the spot like that I it's, get a little more scripted with with that but yep we're trying did you see me flossing the other day I <laughs> did <laughs> I totally loved it. <laughs> we had a good time at the park. Yeah, that was sure. great. Well, thank you. I appreciate your feedback because that's what I was looking for. We're gonna, I'm going to go broad then with this, and I'm going to let Dana then start to be creative in how to, how to bring this you know, out for, for, for the public to see. So thank, thank you for you. that. And we yeah, don't want to stifle her creativity. No, you're yeah, we don't. No, just, absolutely. Okay. I just, I want to be able, I don't want to tell her. I want her to weigh in. So sure. That's great. Great. Okay. Starting smaller will be helpful to her, I'm sure. All right, thank you. So on page 22, I do believe this will be the last time we see it is. the strategic yes. objectives yes. and library goals. So this is it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And do you feel over? I mean, obviously, overwhelming um, success for the goals. I do. Yeah. And you know, the document I know is is quite large, which is in your packet tonight. But we had some wonderful successes. And, and in, the, in the document tonight, too, you'll see where it says completed or is rolling over a little mm -hmm. bit, is still being worked on. And um, I, the, all of the staff weigh into that. Everyone, you know, personal goals and things they're working on by department, everyone in the organization has a hand in it. So that is, that's everything that's been done throughout the year. I, I think we've touched on, you know, everything that people were involved in. And I do. I, I think it was a very successful year. I know that there's always the big projects that tend to get sometimes the bigger publicity and the oohs and ahs, but that's why I appreciate you quarterly taking the time to review and see what else is out there and what individuals are doing that do weigh in and make a, a huge significance to the organization. So thank you. Are there any questions, comments, or anything about all the goals and all the completeds or anything for Julie? I'm just really grateful. I think, um, you know, we're trustees, but we're patrons. Mm -hmm. And I'm here a lot, not on trustee <laughs> <laughs> um, Especially in the summer, I'm so grateful because my kid has like a lot of energy. Yeah. And he comes here and people greet, they greet him by name. And even like Nadia yep. is so amazing. Can I just give her a plug? Sure. Um, she was so patient with him and just there's there's always something new for him to do. We always have different activities. Right. So and it's like, helpful. Let's tell the community Nadia is one of our team volunteers that is mm -hmm. being supported by a stipend from the friends in order yeah. to be one of our go-to teams uh, this summer for summer reading. So yes, yeah, um, she's a great representative mm -hmm. and she's so patient mm -hmm. <laughs> and always smiling. Um, but that is not uncharacteristic of a lot of the people we see. We're here like at least once or twice a week just for summer. Sure. So, um, so I was just feeling that this week. I'm like, man, I like being a trustee, but it just <laughs> as patrons, right. Love we, being we patron. get it put back into mm -hmm. us. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm very grateful, and these highlights don't surprise me. Yeah. Thanks. So there's that. Um, in terms of the makerspace, so I was reading in the news, there's, um, I think they're for profit, but there's a business in Ferndale that's a makerspace, and they're expanding thousands of square feet because the need really exists. So the fact that our library has that really puts us on the forefront because it's public accessible. And free. And free. Yes. And so that that is a tremendous asset yeah. and we should be really proud of that. So 
tell your whole team, like, they're like, they're forging a path. <laughs> it's really awesome. Thank you. It's just the tip of the iceberg for that space. It I is. know it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll entertain any thoughts. Um, you know, I, this is lots of reading material. I would encourage anyone who's watching at home or the staff, you know, they, they will receive this. I always wait till after, but they will receive what's been done this year. Um, lots of documentation and lots of um, catch up as to what, and also board, you know, your policies are in here, mm -hmm. what you've worked on. There, it's, it's a full team effort. Um, but if there's any questions or thoughts, anything, please let me know. I'd be happy to address anything if you have it. But I'm very pleased okay. with this document. A lot of good hard work. Right. When, when do you need us to help you button up everything? We're, we're done. We're done? I mean, we're in, good? In terms, in terms of the gold portion, yeah, for, okay. year for this year. So now I'll look at a way, you know, I, I, if you don't mind, I think the, the presentation quarterly, um, we'll, we'll figure out doing that again, you know, because we take staff goals and what they're working on personally and professionally in, in their departments. You'll see that again, but then also how it weighs into the new strategic things too. We'll try to get those in so that we keep that as a, as a um, running tally of how we're doing over the next three years. Okay. So you might see it a little different just because you're going to see some things repeated in three years because it might be bigger stuff, but then that individual stuff on an annual basis will be in here as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything further? Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, number 11, Treasurer's Report, Trustee Wood. So, uh, starting on page 57, we have an amended budget for Fund 268 for fiscal year 2018-2019. Uh, of total revenues of $3,043,355 and total expenditures of $3,076,480. Looking to consume $33,000 in $33,125 of the general fund. Uh, for the amended budget uh, for Fund 269 for fiscal year 2018 and 19 on page 58, we have total revenues of $46,140 with total expenditures of $133,473. Uh, looking to consume $87,309 out of the uh, fund. So for our revenue and expenditure report for Fund 268, found on page 57, uh, for June 30th, we have uh, a total of revenues of $3,122,771 with expenditures of $2,789,716. Um, that's a positive of $333,055, which uh, as the dust settles, we should uh, stay positive for the uh, fiscal year. So congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> three is my favorite number. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it'll stay at that 333, no. but um, because we do have some invoices still that are coming in that reflect the 1819 year. Um, the city always tries to have everything pretty much cleared up by mid-August, so we just have a couple more weeks to go. But um, for the most part, you're looking at, at very good numbers, so thank you. Mm -hmm. so that's awesome from you and your staff. Yeah. Uh, revenue and expenditure report for Fund 269 on page 58. Uh, June 30th, uh, we have total revenues of $77,688, total expenditures of $112,334. Um, consuming $34,646 out of the uh, general fund. Um, if I'm not mistaken, a lot of the LED uh, work came out of that, correct? Yes. yes. And uh, I think if you look at through this report, you'll see that our expenditures for elect electricity and uh, has been uh, greatly below <laughs> what we budgeted. Yes. And if you looked at it from the year before, it's that's significantly below for the year before. So that uh, spending of $34,000 is uh, coming back Already. several fold. Uh, so the ending fund balance for Fund 268 um, is $2,237,606. The ending fund balance for Fund 269 is $1,672,782. 
and those are found on pages 59 and 60 respectively. Thank you. And this will be the last report for 2018-19. So next month we'll start fresh with our new budget and new numbers. You will, and then we'll just keep you posted on things that have come in that will make the changes. Um, the city does not do their audit until usually uh, end of September, October time. That's when you get the, you get the firmed up numbers, and then we use those for any reports, state aid reports, and everything that we have to file with the state. Mm -hmm. And then we'll also then work from there for the annual report that we will pull, put out uh, once we know those those numbers are firm. Perfect. Thank you. Any Thank questions you. or discussion? All right. Great job, yeah. Treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, Lucy. <laughs> All right, uh, number 12, director's report, Julie. Okay, so we're on page 61. I, I want to call out um, a few anniversaries that we have for the month of August. Um, Rebecca Powell, she's a librarian that works on Sundays with us. And um, August 28th is her anniversary day for 19 years that she's been with us. And Rebecca, I, it, I think that's awesome for Rebecca. Let me just tell you that she only works on Sunday. She actually has another full-time job with a library, but she gives us her time on Sundays. And so to stay up on things that are happening and you know, only once a week, she is a wonderful resource for us on our, on our staff and does a great job on Sundays. We really do appreciate her. Um, Elizabeth Kopko is one of our supervisors in the Support Services Department. August 16th, she will be with us nine years. She also is part of the outreach team. So she keeps everybody um, on the road and getting out to the parks with read box and also to some of our um, facilities uh, to drop off materials. And then Jesse Shank, our, one of our librarians who you've met a couple times because Jesse worked on the CUSAC um, this year and, and gave us that excellent status. Um, she will be with us six years in August. So congratulations to the three employees being recognized. Below that is the information I provided to you. I wanted you to have it just in written form. Um, about our award winners for this year for the staff. And uh, I'll move forward, I, I'll leave page 65 because that's a matter for board action. So we'll, we'll skip over that for now and come back. Um, and then Barbara Kowski provided her report for information technology uh, for June. As you can see, some information about the IQ was added just so people can see what's in there. Um, also our, our photo of our, our young person you know, um, if you didn't get a chance to meet Nicole at um, the IQ um, unveiling on the 22nd of June, Nicole was a patron using the library and um, had some difficulty with sitting for a long period of time and made a recommendation to us to maybe look into stand-up workstations. Well, based on that, we love hearing from our patrons. We do, and because of that, we looked at some spaces that we could you know, make more flexible and put in two stand-up stations, and that is Nicole using it. She's studying for her LSAT, so um, we appreciate her feedback. As we move forward, you'll see Keith Perfect um, put in his information. He did not have a report in last month, so this is two months. This is um, both May and June. Um, pages 68 and 69, a lot of building stuff in the last two months that, uh, that occurred. Uh, page 71, you can see where there was um, cleanup and some work done to the iCube on top with that one photo. And then when we had our leak in the winter, uh, we left that so that we could do some work when we were getting back into the cafe once it was, um, once it, it was um, emptied out. And so we were able to get some other work done in there. And then at page 72, we do have two electronic vehicle stations at the library. And I don't know if everyone uh, you know, knows that. We, we do promote it. But um, so Keith went ahead. And here's what's cool. Keith really thinks about our t using our technology and, and the, we, what we have at the library. So he made a stencil from the IQ <laughs> to create a stencil to put on the pavement so people know that those are electronic vehicle stations and where you can park and then they're highlighted in green. So he he's, awesome. have, he's very creative and he does have a lot of fun I think sometimes with being able to use some of the things and he, but he uses it in a very positive and useful way for us. So that's just an example of that. Can I just say really quick, I sure. thought they stood out more this week but I didn't know why. <laughs> And I was like, why, are they, why do they stand out so much? Okay, thank you. They, you know, they have been painted, so they're a bright green. Um, and then page 73 continues with April Stevenson's report for information services. As you know, lots of programming, events, um, outreach takes place under, under that department. Um, page 74, you'll see the Raising a Reader. And so just that month alone was, was 37,000 books read just in June. It's awesome. I will 
look for her to do a total on that so that mm -hmm. you can get a total for the year and how we did on Raising Reader because it'll be helpful also to share with Rotary, who's a partner of ours. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll look for her to do a, a report on that for all of you just so that you can get a bigger picture. And then on page 75, uh, this is Marianne. Oh, I apologize. It says Marianne, but it should have her last name, which is Zermulin. So excuse me for that. Um, so this is Marianne's report for support services. As you can see, a, a very busy uh, month with statistics and items checked out for 74,000 for the month of June. That's high. Wow. I mean, that's, yeah, that's a busy month with summer reading starting. I think having that kickoff party early in the month. Um, you know, because school was st still in session and yet we, we took advantage of that. And so lots of materials coming and going from the building. And then follows our, um, our year-end wrap-up with all of our statistics, um, as you can see from different, different areas. And that goes through to page 84. Starting on page 85 is our friends report. So you have the May 8th report. You also have on page 88 their June report. And then you also have on page 91 their July report. And Is then that July 18? It says 2018, though, at the top. That is from a year ago from their annual meeting. Okay. So okay. That, is, that was a year ago. They only report that once a year. Okay. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Yep. Um, and then, um, and how I know that is because of the, pres the people that were present at that meeting. That's how I was like. So it's, hmm. it's, they only can approve you can't that a year put, later. But you can't put July's in because it hasn't happened hasn't yet. Well, <laughs> right. right. It happened for us. Right. 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 Okay. So on page um, 94, we have the Historical Commission's um, Wednesday, July 17th agenda. This is the agenda that they sent out. So I want you just to be aware of that. Their next meeting will be Wednesday, August 21st at 7 p.m. And then 90, on page 95, you do have an outlook of... Uh, the calendar for the next um, few months, for the next year actually, through June. It looks like we have to take off the book for the evening, which makes me sad. Yes, we do. But you know what? I'm, Oops, sorry. I'm not sad for the way that they've approached it, yeah. and that's for them to take more time for them to gear up for a really big event. Mm -hmm. I think they want to go big. It sounds and, like it. Yes, and I and I do think they need the time to really, you know, plan plan for that event. Mm -hmm. So. But I, I have some other things I'm going to uh, float their way for maybe ways for them to um, gain some revenue over, over the year, cool. knowing that that won't happen. Um, also, I wanted to ask, you know, I'm, it, it happens. I've already started receiving a timeline and, and dates for budget to start planning for 2021. It, that's just how it works. I wrote back quickly to the finance department going, seriously, it's literally <laughs> June 1st. <laughs> Um, but we do that, and I know in the past we've done budget sessions on a Saturday, and, and I, I do respect that being family time and stuff. So would any of you entertain Fridays, like a Friday afternoon, if I gave those dates way in advance for you to entertain a Friday afternoon? I mean, because they will be in January and February, I could plan them now, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't fall, I mean, it'd be an open meeting, so anyone is welcome, and then it wouldn't fall on a weekend if you wanted me to do that. I haven't chosen dates, and I'm happy to do that if you wanted if you wanted me to look that way. It's up to you. I just thought I'd throw it out just knowing that, you know, weekends are hard, and, and I'm working, I work weekends, and I typically choose the weekends I work, but I know, you know, you have a lot going on too, and if you wanted Friday afternoons, I, I could do that, or in, or in evening. I just know that sometimes evenings might be difficult too, so I'm, I'm up to whatever to make it flexible for you. I'm open to whatever. If I know if in advance, yeah. I could definitely I could make those. From literally, work. I could make those dates now for you to have six months out. Okay. I mean, yes. if we can have advance yeah. notice. Yeah. Okay. Anything can happen. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to do that. I'm actually going to look ahead. I'm going to do a Friday. And I'm going to work for those two dates for okay. to see how it goes. Okay? Okay. Great. Thank you. Any okay. questions? I do have yes. one yes. on page 75. So I, I'm just curious, the Novi Schools card registration, is that still from the Deerfield cards or is that from something else? That, that comes out of central office. So that oh. is not Deerfield. We've been working with central office for, oh, oh, two years now. Is that when you register? At the beginning of the year when you, that's awesome. Okay, so, so when you have the beginning of the year and that's, uh, they have, um, they do a roundup and things in the, yes. in the winter, usually February and March. Yep. But, when they get a new family walk in, that can be any time during the school year, so that's that great. counts that that's as well. True. 
So if they're filling out an application and information about moving into the district, they're now getting a small application and getting the library card right in that, that visit. Nice. And yeah. then they don't have to come here. They're already set to use the library. Perfect. Thank yes. you. Mm -hmm. Are we, um, because the, the, the summer reading initiative that your staff put together, are we doing anything for the fall um, for children who are older past kindergarten? In terms of like a reading program? Yeah, like a competition or usually, to gamify it like we did for the summer. Yeah, usually after the summer, I'll be honest, the staff needs some rest. Okay. <laughs> they, they do. I mean, they, yeah, no, it's they understandable. go really, they start planning summer reading, first of all, in the winter. So it, okay. gets, it, gets, it gets started with planning and thinking in January. Wow. And then they really kick off and get things going. As you know, we started June 9th. And it'll go to August 17th. Yes. Um, if you don't mind, I'd, I'd really like to give them some time to breathe. Oh, no, I don't mind. We, I just, it's library card sign up is September. Mm -hmm. So we kind of shift to, hey, if you don't have a card, you know, let's, let's focus that way. I can yeah. tell you I had a meeting with um, Superintendent um, Matthews, Dr. Matthews, and I'm working with him so that all his employees at the district get a card at the end of August when they come back. That would be so awesome. So the whole entire team, and there's close to 800 employees with the district, will get a library card handed to them when they come back to start the school year. So from that, I, I have a meeting coming up with um, Superintendent Gutman from Wall Lake. I'm going to be working with the buildings that serve Novi and those teachers and those educators getting the same thing that we're going to do with Novi, but um, I'm very excited about doing that. I, t I told Steve, I said, there's no reason why their business is here, right. they're working here, and they're supporting all of our kids that they don't have access in some way. Right. So I we're think making that happen this fall. That's awesome. Yeah. I think the main reason why I asked is because we have the Beanstack app now, mm -hmm. and it's kind of gamifying and encouraging reading because um, kids can get badges and things like that. And so maybe there's a way for us to think about in the future is some type of partnership with Novi Schools so that they can unlock badges. Oh, as they? Yeah, as they're reading at school. Um, just because it's a digital way to track and it's very convenient for parents mm -hmm. and possibly teachers. Okay. So it's just an idea. Nope, I love it. I will, I will I'm definitely. assuming we're paying for the app, so I just want to get the most out of it. We do. Yeah. But we also use it, though, throughout the year. For the early childhood reading right. and stuff yes. like that, yeah. And, and the thousand books will continue. That yes. Went in. That always continues because we're, we're focusing on that early emergent reader and mm -hmm. those littles at that point. Which is awesome. Mm -hmm. so. And you do the Thank winter you. challenge. We will do our battle of the books. Yep, right. That, that we do that. Going. The winter challenge has always been something that's not us that we piggyback to if they offer it nationally. Okay. But we have, yes. Cool. Yes. But it's not something we started as a winter challenge. It's, it's usually from a, a other program, another program. Okay. Yep. So question on the teacher cards. I know we, we talked a couple weeks ago about that. Sure. Um, <coughs> so, so if a teacher has okay. that card, do they have access to everything? In Novi. In, in Novi, right. yeah. Right. They okay. would be using the Novi library only. Okay. They wouldn't have access to other libraries. And okay. that's because we're giving them that privilege to be here in our community. Okay. Because okay. they work. They wouldn't be able to go to other libraries like Wixom and stuff. Right. They'd have to come and pick up the materials and, and use us specifically. And I think that piggybacks my next question. Sure. Because, 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 because I know for a library card, if, if a non-resident is an employee of the city, they have to forego their their resident library cards? Right. Mm -hmm. Would that be the same condition? No, they wouldn't because we're going to work for that to be a work purpose. Okay. And for them to look differently in the catalog so that they, they can have, they can work personally with mm -hmm. what they have and maybe the community they're with, but then have that privilege through us. That's okay. Cool. Um, yep. Great question. Yep, I'm excited for yep. that. I am too. Thank you. Yep. Steve, I think, almost fell off his chair when I said, so. <laughs> Here's what I need from you. I need the I'm sure he wasn't overly yeah. surprised. <laughs> he would, no, he's, you know what? I, I have to tell you, we're in, and it's been the same with the other districts too. But when you, they're always my trial, right? Because they're right, they're right down the street. And when you have a meeting and you say, "How about this?" and what's so nice to hear is, 
either yes or sounds awesome or interesting and it's it's always an opportunity to, to think of it you know mm -hmm. not no so I appreciate that I really do they don't close doors they're very open to hearing ideas and, and things that we want to do with them yeah but, yeah and I and I think mr. Gottman will be there well, be the he, same he is no yeah. absolutely it's been the same with Wild Lake as well yeah. when I sit down it's different because there's only a small group right. um, but it's always been very receptive as well from Wild Lake and yeah. By doing this, then, you know, we do have other communities. We do have South Lyon. Mm -hmm. You know, we have people living in South Lyon that are in Nova Schools, and we have Northville. So we're not forgetting those either, but it's easier for me to question, start. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. It's easier for me to start with the bigger ones first and then yeah. see how that goes and then figure out what, what the best way to tailor it than for those that are a little smaller and a little more detailed. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just want to say thank you since it's our year end sure. for your, I mean, amazing support with the financials and all the goals and your ideas and the support that you give everybody, the team yep. and us and everything. So You're thank you. Welcome. I think this was a very, very awesome kind of year end meeting. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Anything else before we go? Yep. Okay. Uh, number 13, committee report. This is the policy committee. Yep, so um, I think you got a handy, beautiful book here <laughs> um, that was put together. I heard Marsha did this beautiful work. I yes. like the color. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of a beautiful summer sky. Uh, so some good reading in there. Um, Kat and myself uh, were the uh, lead on that. Mm -hmm. uh, but now we have a new committee. It's me and Melissa. Um, I was going to just mention the, the third bullet point. I'm not, I'm just curious with... Yes. Um, can I be alerted of those things just because I'm the chair of the committee? I didn't know about the, the meeting with the friends it, for the MOU. Sure, and, and actually it's been brought to the board as a whole throughout the year. I haven't done committee work with that. I'm just reporting it there because it's policy. Okay. It's actually been brought directly just to the board. From the so it wasn't like a meeting it, that happened recently. I, I met with them, but it was continued meetings that I've been having with them. Is it possible to ever be invited? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Yep. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So, the HR committee. Do you mind if I report? Okay. So, um, we met on July seventh. Um, well, let me start. With, let me read what's in front of me first. Um, the satisfaction surveys on hold. Then we met on July seventeenth. There was Cat Dooley, Melissa Augusta, Julie Farkas, and Marsha Dominic. Um, and so we have a couple recommendations that we're going to bring up for board action, so I'll hold off on that. Um, the second one, um, the HR committee is requesting trustees to provide additional feedback, feedback and recommendations to Julie to any areas on the performance evaluation that there was a rated three, which is meet expectations. And Julie has copies of your evaluations if you need them for your records. Um, and I just want to say thank you to anyone that has already reached out to Julie. Yep. Um, in addition to that, we're also requesting if you cannot attend the mid-year or the year-end evaluation session to please provide Julie with your written evaluations either before or after. Um, this is really important because that we all provide feedback and goals. That's how Julie focuses on her year and sets her goals um, for herself. Thank you. Um, and number three, um, I did add myself to the HR committee due to there only being two trustees. And then also I did talk to um, Trustee Wood that since he is the chair for the finance committee that I would like to be the chair of the HR committee. And he was um, awesomely awesome with that. So. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. 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 Yeah. Sorry. Um, and so that if you could change that in the HR committee, yes. that would be. So I'll make Augusta chair, but then Wood and Dooley will be. Yep. Yes, yes trustees. Please. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that's all I have for that. And then C is finance committee. So I was not able to meet uh, last Thursday, unfortunately, due to business reasons. But it sounded like uh, we had an opportunity to talk about the um, first draft of the resolution for the endowment. Fund and um, did you get you got a copy? I have a copy. Great. And um, so you're going to take that to the Novi Finance Department for yes. any input based on uh, that uh, document. Um, and then in April and May, uh, obviously we still have some continued uh, challenges with our prior tenant. Uh, they haven't made their last two monthly payments, mm. and we will be looking to uh, send a letter yes. to our past 
um, cafe leaser. And, and I uh, initiated that with our attorney already. I'm just waiting to see. Mm -hmm. Very good. And then the committee was presented with a summary of the, the 2019-2020 library budget information uh, that's compiled by the city finance department and uh, all board members receive this information, hard copy for review mm -hmm. and informational purposes. Thank you, sir. D, events marketing fundraising. Yep, so we are meeting t t t t uh, on Monday, August 5th at 2 o'clock. Uh, Tara, Kat, and I are going to meet with Julie and Dana to, to work on library board bingo to get that idea <laughs> off. Um, and then in terms of programs, tenant this last month, uh, my name's on there a couple times. So, so we partner with, with the Parks Department and other groups in Novi to, to, to do, to do a uh, weekly, weekly kids show at a park. Um, and I have 10 of those. We have like magicians, musicians. Next week we have animal magic coming. So, so those are some fun events with a very great turnout. Yes. Perfect weather yes. so far, <laughs> knock on wood, it stays that way. And hundreds of kids, it's been great. <laughs> yes, and Julie Flossing is another, <laughs> is another uh, draw to that. Um, including, including the library tables, table of suckers, because. Yes. Um, yeah, because the first one, we didn't do that. Oh my gosh. And, the, and there was a lot of backlash, <laughs> so the second, and all the other ones we Who would have thought that Dum Dum Suckers were that popular and, and of such importance? Yes, but yeah. they are, so. It's a classic. <laughs> yep, and then uh, other programs, we all attended the HR training by Foster Swift um, on the 11th of July. Uh, and, then, and then on July 13th was the classic car show. I don't know if any of my fellow trustees were able to attend that. I tried. But it, it was a very nice event. I heard it was awesome. Yeah. 209 cars. Love it. Oh. Yeah. Which from, it's I'm, I'm not a car show person. <laughs> I'm not either. <laughs> and from what I heard from attendees having the opportunity to walk around a little bit, mm -hmm. for a first time show, the compliments were huge about that many attendees for a first time. So that's great. Gail Anderson knocked it out of the park. She did a great job putting this together. Thank and you, I Gail. do believe this will be something that um, might be annual, just based on uh, the response and from the different people that took part in it. That's cool. Yeah, and it was perfect weather. Um, a lot of people, a nice mix of different cars. I'm not a car person, but it looked like a different mix of different yeah. um, decades and years. Yeah. Um, this part, this part of it, at the, towards the end of it, I thought it was kind of funny. But there was like they had all the cars with all the hoods popped up, and then there was a group of high school kids that drove up with them. They're like 2015, <laughs> <laughs> popped their hood up and everything, and they're like. <laughs> Oh, right, that was funny. Everyone was included. Yes, I, I, yes, yes. Just that group of high school kids just wanted, their, just wanted to take part. That's cute. Aww. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Yep. Strategic planning, Trustee Dooley. Yes, so I, I believe we um, indicated everything during the president's report, so I have nothing further at this time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, building and landscape. Um, I guess I have to say. Well, nothing to report on the, the, the race car. Uh, library cafe, we all already spoke to that. Uh, grounds, there's three certainties in life. Uh, death, taxes, and issues with bio swales every year. So I won't go into that. Uh, lending library kiosk, uh, meeting schedule for August 21st. Mm -hmm. Uh, the unveiling has been moved up and will occur during the yeah. middle of the May, and so we're going to have to have a uh, all-day staff training before that, moved up from August to May, in order to uh, have everyone familiar with the new technology. LED lighting, we talked about that, all in, <laughs> saving money as we speak, and uh, library van uh, meeting took place on uh, July 11th with the city fleet manager. Uh, looks like we're going to get a 2020 transit van, yes. nice. nice and sleek, and uh, we do have that budgeted, so uh, I think that's all. And I do believe our support services department is going to be very excited for that Christmas gift to arrive towards the end of <laughs> December, early January. They're, they're just dying to drive a new vehicle. <laughs> and, uh, and if I can say huge, 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 huge thank you to the Parks and Rec department over the last couple years you know we we had our van we sold it and then they let us take pretty much full ownership of a van that wasn't being used by them and then they were calling us to borrow it so we we really did take the lead and they let us do that so I appreciate them 
you know, loaning that to us and letting us have that time just to plan for the van and, and something new, but saving some money in the meantime and, and working with us on that. So I think what we'll do is we'll look to reciprocate knowing that they don't use a van very often, but that once we get ours, you know, we'll put a, a memorandum, memorandum of understanding together with them so that we can provide it, you know, when we're not using it, that they have access to it. Okay. Very um, nice. I think they'll help. What we'll, what we'll see is um, through the city and through their... Um, department we can get really good service on the van should we ever need it and stuff and that's one way to offset some costs by by having that um, partnership very nice yep. thank you okay uh, six bylaw committee um, there's nothing to report at this yep. time um, public comment in order to hear all citizen comments at a reasonable hour the library board requests that speakers respect the three minute time limit this is not a question and answer session therefore library board members will not respond to questions it is an opportunity to voice your thoughts with the novi public library board of trustees again we don't have anybody today and number 15 um, matters for board action a um, this is a consideration of three additional days for the library closing in 2020 and then also moving the in-service closure to May instead of August to accommodate training for the lending library for all staff. And that's on pages 65 through 66. There was a request last month so that you could see some statistics as to how those days are, have been used. Mm -hmm. um, as I look at the numbers, uh, you know, for July 5th, you know, the numbers are still fairly good. We <coughs> average about 1,300 people a day. So those numbers are, are still fairly high. When I look at the December 26th and 27th, those are based on how they fall, and it's going to be the weekend of Saturday, Sunday in 2020. Those are, are pretty, you know, they're lower than what we normally see. So I wanted you just to see that information in advance and, and then get a direction from all of you as to if you'd want to be closing on those dates or not. So you have to have an answer to us by we, a we decision. But we can wait to the August meeting. I know that I'm going to need a decision in August. If you want to look at these numbers and just okay. take your time, we still have time. I'm, this year, I brought it much earlier to all of you. So, so this is my thoughts: is that um, being that we don't have Trustee Messerneck and Lawler, mm -hmm. and I know that this is an important issue again for Lawler. Would sure. everybody be okay if we waited just for totally. one month? Yeah. And, that's, and that's okay. And what day is our August meeting? Thursday, the twenty second of August. So yes. we'll be okay with that. We will. Okay. Yeah. So because okay. typically the end of right August here. is when they're asking me, and then we'll have it. We'll have it for a month. Okay. So okay. we will make a final decision. Can in I August. Ask you, uh, sure. With the training, uh, how long is that training? The training. I mean, they're going to be in town for a week for major training of it. What, what we'll use that Friday for is to just get everybody up to speed. You know, the main people that would be having to work with Lending Library on a regular basis are going to get that week of training. I'm going to use that Friday for everyone else on staff to get familiar with it and be able to talk about it. I want that talking point mm -hmm. and that comfort, that, that comfort from all the staff to know what it is. I have found that when I do that, they are better spokesmen of it. So it would be all day. I think we're planning for, you know, a good overview of the machine and how it's used, let people play with it a little bit. And if I can, maybe use a space out in that area to do, bring in some other training for, for to use the whole day like I normally do. Okay. The only concern I have, you know, with this, and I understand that, yep. is, you know, August, it's a lot easier to take that Friday off, yes. which is May, a Friday yes. in May with, uh, I think this is utilized with high schoolers. Right. And so, I do have concerns with that closing okay. all day. Yep. Okay. Uh, so we could well maybe that's a do a half me. day. Yeah. It would be interesting. Yeah, if you could kind yeah. of look at that, we and could kind of maybe look at maybe some options there sure. to maybe accommodate both of them. Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to check that for next month. Um, number uh, B. Number B. Letter B, which is a motion um, to approve the library director's salary compensation. So at our HR committee, what we um, this was the recommendation that we kind of threw around. I'm going to present it to you for discussion and then um, possible vote to give Julie Farkas, our library director, a 2.5% increase effective July 1st based on her evaluation with the board on June 27th. This is in line with the city set standards. Um, in addition, we do recommend this um, one-year, uh, one-time 5% uh, bonus. Any questions? 
I'm sorry. Five percent. Five percent. Mm -hmm. Is it five or point five? Five. Five percent. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Five percent. No, point five. That's what oh, you yeah, point five. Okay. Five point five. five. You, thank you. Thank you for the thank you. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Melissa. <laughs> yeah. Woo. I thought you said five. I did say five. Point five. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Let me re say that again. Um, in addition, we recommend a point five percent bonus. So that would be it would equivalent for you know the two point five plus the point five. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I knew something didn't look right, but I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Julie. <laughs> Five percent. Okay. <laughs> My phone would be ringing off. The I think we should definitely be called back yeah, in. Yeah. yeah. Is there any discussion? All right. So I would like to make a motion um, to uh, give Julie Farkas a two point five percent increase effective July first, and also a point a one time point five percent bonus effective July first. Second. Do I hear first? Oh. Mo motion, motion to approve. A motion to approve. I, I thought you, yeah, made, I thought the you made the motion. Oh, I would like. Oh, is that how it works? I, I would like to make the motion to approve. I thought you made that. Yes. Oh, sorry. I would like to make, make the make motion. It? No, you yeah. can't. You can't. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No, she right. I would like. She's to calling for a motion. I would like to someone to request a motion. I request the motion. <laughs> there you go. Yes, David. I just wanted to be official. Thank, no, I appreciate that. I'm like, wait, no, I didn't. That doesn't count. You second it. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Thank you. Thank sorry, you. Barbara. Thank you. <laughs> What'd you say? I said sorry, Barbara. Let <laughs> 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 like, oh. <laughs> me read through and listen to those. I want it on the record that I am not drinking or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. That's next Friday. <laughs> <sighs> okay, and then um, C, which is um, B4 policy, a meeting room or rental. That we're going to pause that till August because that's still getting still working. Yeah. Okay. 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 Perfect. Still working with the attorney. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, no, we have, no, we have lease oh, agreement D. D. So just, oh, you know, I, I wrote it on the wrong page. That's okay. <laughs> I, I can speak to this. You Thank have you. a draft. Um, Trustee Wood, I don't know, how many drafts would you say you've seen? <laughs> Too many to count? Yes. I'm having a hard time keeping track of them. Yes. Right. I appreciate yeah. um, Trustee Masternick's email. I think it was two weeks ago, and he's like, I'm so glad you're keeping track of this because, oh, my goodness. So there's been a lot. This is the most recent draft. As you can see, there's yellow and red, and so it is very well marked up for you. First time for you to see it. I will make sure that this then is in packet because it missed packet going out. I'll make sure it's in the August packet. It will come back as second draft, though. Yes. You might see more changes because that, okay. that happens, but I'll bring it back as second draft. I'm hoping that the school district is going to be taking theirs August 8th. We meet August 22nd. And then I'm still, I am still on a calendar and time frame that we open sometime in September. At least at this point, I'd like to get a date of when that opening might be so that we can start to you know, tell people that it's coming. Um, if, it, if it doesn't open before school or as school is, is starting, we'll work with our teen space and provide some snacks and stuff and take care of the kids until we get that opening time. They might be able to do a soft open with some little things. I have a meeting next week that will allow me a better idea of, you know, what they can do based on equipment and stuff and ordering. And they haven't been able to order anything because we just, we haven't been quite there yet to make sure we're, you know, we're, but I'm feeling very comfortable at this point and I do see us in, hopefully in September opening sometime. Okay? So I will bring this back for August. Okay. So you're basically asking for us to review it really well. And I am. Yeah. Okay. This is this is your time to really review things. If you can, if any thoughts or concerns that you might have, if you can send me individual emails. Sure. Okay. I will then take all that into account and work work through that prior to the August meeting. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. So, so don't use ready, please. Yes. <laughs> so I'm hoping at the next meeting too, the 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 committee, the whoever's reviewing it, will yes. have a recommendation yes. too, so that, that would is, be helpful. That is my on it. Mm -hmm. I think our address is wrong on here in the first paragraph. It's funny that that's not ready though. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's we need another number. Four five two five five. Yes, thank you. Good job. Good job. I, wouldn't have I have that. to tell you, after looking at it many times, it does get a little glossy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So. It's the English teacher. Go to the. Well, thank you. you know, I appreciate it. 
Perfect. Any additional um, items that I missed or discussion? All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 We need to oh. get a second. We need to know who that second oh. was. Oh. We can have second. Tori do the second. Tori. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> A little excited. Was second. Um, Tara was the first. Yep. Yep. Thank, thank you, you for that. Yep. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All, in, all right. Meeting adjourned. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank everyone, you. for your help, guidance.